The Simic Combine is known for their intelligence, for their vast laboratories, for their need to evolve and to adapt. So tell me about the Simic Combine. Uh, the Simic Com Combine is another one of our kind of science-oriented guilds, kind of like, uh, uh, like the Izzet, but where the Izzet are very much kind of these over-the-top scientists, the Simic are much more about uh, seeing, uh, working toward an idealized utopian future. They are, their science is less about, you know, the uh, over-the-top explosions, and it's more about looking at the biology and looking at biology and nature and using their magic to manipulate uh, that biology to create adaptations that will uh, uh, help build a better tomorrow kind of, kind of thing. Their scientists are, are called biomancers and terraformers. So terraformers will use that kind of biological magic to shape, re literally reshape the, uh, the city. So when you look at a lot of um, Simic art, it shows a lot of like, uh, whether it's armor or clothing they're wearing or, um, or items that they're holding, a lot of things in the Simic look like they've been grown as opposed to being built. They're using this kind of magic to manipulate biology to build the things they, they want or to build the things that they believe are improvements. Um, the latest development of the Simic is starting to use that on that type of magic of biological manipulation on themselves. And so one of the races that we're introducing here are what are known as Simic hybrids. That will, uh, they might start as a human or an elf or a Vidalcan, and they will use their magic to graft on traits of other, of other animals. And they typically gravitate toward aquatic or reptilian uh, animals. So you might have you know, an elf that has been augmented to have, uh, suddenly have uh, an extra pair of crab claw arms. Or they might have these manta style wings that will allow them to fly. So uh, they're basically taking everything that they have learned by observing uh, nature and taking their magic and scientifically creating uh, new life forms. A lot of the stuff that the Simic does is not really seen in public, um, but a Simic hybrid may, may emerge either because they were specifically adapted for a particular mission. They might you know, emerge from one of the uh, uh, Simic laboratories, but a lot of what they do isn't really isn't really seen by, by much of the other, uh, many of the other guilds, but the other guilds kind of see them, some might see them as manipulating you know, nature and creating these kind of aber uh, aberrations, and um, whereas others might appreciate their scientific approach to things, but not necessarily like the outcomes of what they're, what they're doing. So again, all of these things are going, are going to vary. And for, for some, like, I'm not sure, I mean, the Rakdos may be fascinated by, by these civic uh, mutants, but uh, they might not really have a strong opinion about, about the Simic, uh, unless you know, they were going to come in actual conflict with each other. Uh, I, I honestly think a lot of the people who are science-minded, who believe that, or who want to create characters that see uh, magic and science as a way to solve problems, this might, might appeal to them. Um, it also might appeal to people who want to I, I just want to create a biological super soldier. You know, there's there's a certain sense of fun and kind of pulpiness that can come with a lot of the uh, a lot of the Semic characters. Thank you, Ari Levitch, for talking more about Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. That book is available right now on dndbeyond.com. I am Todd Kenrick, your host. Thank you so much for watching.